Hi, everybody. This is Jimmy DeYoung. Welcome to Prophecy Today video. On this broadcast, we're going to be talking about the United States forces withdrawing from Iraq. How does that play into what is going to happen in that part of the world? There's a historic significance and a prophetic significance to that particular location. We'll get into that in just a moment. On our weekend broadcast, we had some very important conversations with uh, these men, broadcast partners around the world, who help us to understand all the current events unfolding in our world. I talked with Colonel Bob McGinnis in Washington about the pullout of U.S. troops from Iraq. Now, I will get to that in just a moment in more detail. We talked with David Dolan. He covers the Middle East for us with our Middle East News Update. And David focused with me on the 24th anniversary of Hamas, their desire to set up a worldwide caliphate to have dominion over all of this world. By the way, Malachi chapter 1 is talking about the people known as the Palestinians. They were descendants of Esau. They would return and we rebuild. And God said, I will call their borders the borders of wickedness. Ezekiel 35 and verse 5 says, These people, these Edomites, the Palestinians, will kill the Jews and take their land. That seems to be the plan for Hamas. And indeed, that's what we covered with David Dolan. Yoel Karen talked to us about Hanukkah, talked to us about the temple, but he also talked to us about the possible civil war there in Judea and Samaria. The possibility of a second Jewish state is absolute because Bible prophecy calls for it. Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 15 to 23, says there will be a second Jewish state just prior to the coming of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Ken Timmerman brought to our attention late breaking news a court case uh, that took place there in Manhattan in New York City talking about the Iranian involvement in 9-11. Iran is a major player in the alignment of nations that comes against the Jewish state of Israel. Ezekiel 38.5 mentions Persia, and until 1936, that's what they called Iran, Afghanistan, and Pakistan. They will play a role in the end-time alignment of nations. With Rob Congdon, we talked about the European Union political union taking shape. That's interesting because they're going to have two tracks, Rob told us, and that's a part of how the revived Roman Empire comes to power. Daniel chapter 2, Daniel chapter 7. We're looking at Bible prophecy being fulfilled there in the European Union right before our very eyes. And Steve Herzig of Friends of Israel gave us a lot of information about Hanukkah, the Jewish holy day, the celebration of defeat of Antiochus Epiphanes. By the way, it was prophesied 360 years before the fact that Antiochus because Epiphanes would do what he did. And that's in Daniel chapter 11, verses 21 to 25. Study Bible prophecy. It helps us to understand the times in which we are living. You can go to our website, prophecytoday.com, and listen to all of these interviews that I did with these broadcast partners on Prophecy Today weekend. Again, that address, prophecytoday.com, PTRN, Prophecy Today Radio Network. But the lead story has to be the so-called end of the war in Iraq. They had a flag ceremony there in Baghdad. Secretary of Defense Leon Panetta was there to lead that ceremony. Meanwhile, there were mass demonstrations taking place in Fallujah. Now, Fallujah has been the capital of the Sunni Muslims. Remember that uh, Iraq is broken down into three parts. In the north, you have the Kurds. In the south, the Shiites. In the center part of Iraq, you have the Sunnis. And, of course, that was the ruling group which Saddam Hussein came from. And they have been demonstrating. In fact, they burned American and Israeli flags there in the streets in a mass demonstration. The weak Iraqi government is going to have to work very tediously at the task of rebuilding this war-torn country. It's going to be a real problem because they do not have the strength they need in Prime Minister Maliki. United States pulls out, uh, albeit they are over there in the Kuwait area, but we're going to have to watch very closely how this unfolds. And as Ken Timmerman told us in his interview with me on Prophecy Today weekend, uh, that uh, there are Iranian agents in the Iraqi government that want to take the Iraqi government down and make it the greater area of Iran. But they're going to have to work at rebuilding this war-torn nation. If they can get the oil out of the ground, it could be the richest nation in the world. God has a plan for it, and we'll talk about it in a moment. I must remind you of the historic and the prophetic significance of Iraq. 
are better known as Biblical Babylon. Let me think with you historically. 4,500 years ago, there was a man named Nimrod. He was a great-grandson of Noah. And instead of following the Lord's command to repeople the earth, go out and spread people all over the earth and occupy it, he went to one location. It was on the shores of the Euphrates River there in the land of Shinar. That's modern-day Iraq. 58 miles out of downtown Baghdad is the location where Nimrod built that great city called Babel. 2,500 years ago, in the Word of God, you can study about the Babylonian Empire that came to power. That would be Ezekiel and Daniel. They record the events happening with those two prophets, both of them taken into the Babylonian captivity. In fact, there is a record of the fall of the Babylonian Empire. That's Daniel chapter 5. Now, let me remind you, the Babylonian Empire fell. It was not the city of Babylon. The city never fell. Ezra chapter 7 says there was a prophet or a man named Ezra there who went back to Jerusalem. He was in Babylon. Second Peter, uh, excuse me, First Peter chapter 5 and verse 13 talks about the apostle Peter going to Babylon and establishing a church. Saddam Hussein in 1991 was refurbishing the city of Babylon. It has never been destroyed. So prophetically, we have to look at the fact that uh, Babylon, the city, has never been destroyed. It is called for its complete construct a destruction in Isaiah chapters 13 and 14, Jeremiah 50 and 51, and Revelation chapters 16, verse 17 and following, and Revelation 18. In fact, in Revelation 18, it says in one hour, verses 10, 17, and 19, in one hour, Babylon, the area we know as Iraq, will be destroyed. Revelation 18 talks about Babylon, the economic power base of the world. All the people will receive a mark on their forehead, the back of their hand, to be able to buy or sell. The merchants will wax rich in their partnership with the Antichrist, who rules this global economic power. And by the way, the economic crisis in our world today is setting the stage for everybody to take a mark on the forehead or the back of the hand to be able to buy or sell. Reasons for the U.S. military in Iraq are very evident. Saddam Hussein and his 7 million man army going to Jerusalem had to be taken out. That was not God's plan to march into Jerusalem. Saddam Hussein had to be removed. Iraq has to be rebuilt and up and ready for operation as Revelation chapter 18 calls for. Dear friends, as we've talked about it today on this broadcast, the stage is set all of the personalities are in place, the actors are ready, and the curtain's about to go up. All of Bible prophecy will be fulfilled. But the next thing to happen, the rapture. That happens, and then all of the prophecies are fulfilled. The rapture could happen at any moment. And having said that, nothing left for me to say, except let's keep looking up until...